They go to an auto show and you see somebody drooling on a Ferrari and then shuffling off to their minivan. It was like, wait, there's a step between you hate your minivan and you want a Ferrari. Let's find that. Everybody forgets that driving is fun. Do you like being here? Do you like driving the car? And that's what people forget about. Dwayne. My name is Paul. And I'm Todd. And you're getting to know Everyday Driver. Everyday Driver is a YouTube channel that performs cinematic car review comparisons, but we also do single car reviews, long-term ownership reviews, podcasts twice a week, and once a year, we make a feature film. We intercut the two of us in the same car, because while we're great friends and we agree a lot, there's plenty of things we don't agree on. So there's plenty of times when I'm driving a car and I will say this about the handling, and I can cut to Paul sitting in the same driver's seat, having the same moment, and has the, the exact opposite, opposite thing, thing to say. Right. And, and there are people that will catch us for the first time and be like, wait a minute, why did one guy say this and the other guy say that? Because we're different people. And because you as a person that buys a car, you may feel about one of us or the other. It's a conversation, and both of us are continually looking at ourselves on camera and thinking, you know, who do I want to be? Who do I want to come across? As a presenter, you know, you want to be the person that you're continually engaged with and you like them they're funny they're they're honest about the things that they are in their life and the, the subject they're talking about and that's how we want to come across so when we're giving you our opinion you can count on that it's always this movement and it's constantly able to be in motion and what's nice is the back of cars plus all of this system provides enough damping that we very rarely get camera shake which is awesome I went in the film industry because I'd, I'd never owned a car I loved. I'd owned cars that were appliances. I loved them, but it wasn't anything that had connected to my reality. And while working in Hollywood, I bought a Nissan 300ZX, a car I'd lusted after when they were new, and now I could afford one. And I fell in love with that car, and I fell in love with the Canyon Roads of LA, and it was like reawakening something that I didn't even realize how strong it was in me. Why are we not enjoying what we drive? It became so obvious to me and important to me, and then to be a filmmaker who could now share that information was even cooler. I grew up drawing cars so much, and I think there's a lot of guys who can say they grew up sketching and drawing cars, but my mother let me draw on the walls of her house, of our house. She just would kind of grit her teeth and let me keep drawing <laughs> and encourage that, and that turned into a, a degree in car design. One of the other things that actually surprises people is that we don't script at all. Yeah. We, we, we do yeah. no pre-writing. We actually have a, a crib sheet we keep in the car because, so, I mean, I don't want to keep all the stats in my head. We have a crib sheet in the because car Because they'll just be stats like That's every true. other car video you probably see out there. It's That's just true. stats. It, it can be. It has power windows. It has air conditioning. Have I mentioned it? has a transmission. I mean, we know each other. I know, I know our cadences. Obviously, I've been editing for us for the whole time. The whole thing we're setting out to do is we want to give you gut reactions. And that's the thing we're honing, is when you're hearing commentary from us, it's an actual, it's a comment that is coming to us as we're driving the car. So it is very much real time. Car. This car has a dry sump. It has a PDK transmission. You could track this. It's set up to be a track car. Six piston brakes on this. Who is this for? Well, probably us, now that I think about it. But this is why we're driving these cars. We've, uh, we've been friends for a long time and learned from each other over the years. And uh, it grew organically. We just, you know, from a filmmaking perspective, he was telling me about this, and we tried it out on our own cars and thought, could this work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're searching for it. I think if it hadn't, we would have just kind of thought, all right, well, that was kind of a fun shooting experiment. Point. I, but I submit to you that if we weren't doing the show, we probably would rarely ever talk. I don't think we'd both live in Utah. I don't, I don't think a lot of that stuff would have progressed. I mean, there's, there's been a progression because we've spent so much time yeah. hanging out together related to the show. I moved to L.A. into an apartment with three guys I didn't even know, and he was one of them. And I was just moved in there, just started sleeping in the extra bed, and I was trying to be a filmmaker and wound up working in a film studio. I was on that path. And he was on a totally separate path and went designing for car companies. And that friendship grew and got closer. And then we bumped into this idea in the process, which is fantastic. And, you know, we do, um, we do everything. We, we host, we shoot, we read the comments, we read the emails, we respond to emails, we chase cars, we do all of it. We have people that help us now, which are awesome. We've got Chance and Edgar, both of which help us, which are great. Uh, we've got Tom, who's actually doing stuff for us in Europe, which is amazing. He's yeah. a guy that helped yeah. us when we went to Europe the first time. And now he's getting in cars we don't get, which is amazing. Um, but we are still, in spite of all that, a tiny outlet. I have been with 
just everyday driver for about two years now. Well, I tend to write some of the articles for our website and I take care of the Instagram account and things of that nature. We're not the biggest, we're not anywhere near the biggest, but we're, we're big enough that we've got a good following and we're growing. We've actually, in the last two years, we've doubled in our subscribers on YouTube alone. And what you see on camera is what you get. They, they don't put on an act. This is, that's just how they are in person. This year is television for us. We've always shot from the very beginning. We've had television in mind mm -hmm. and shot every video so you'll see the production value in terms of you know a longevity kind of thing. Years from now, we want to look back. Our face and our name were associated with this work. The intention has always been high quality, let's get beyond YouTube. And here in 2017, that's happening. We're going to be on Velocity starting in April, which is soon, and there's much editing to do. Yeah, but to do. starting in April, and we'll be on for 13 weeks. And our hope is we're able to do big productions for television, keep doing stuff for the web, and keep doing these trips that we're hosting. Uh, if we can do all of the above, then that will be a victory at a level that I didn't even imagine, which would be great. Here we are, 2017. The first thing that we shot was July of 2007. We've been talking a lot about the fact that 2017 is 10 years of doing this at some level. I would have never believed it if somebody had said to me, 10 years from now you're going to still be doing this show. It's going to be predominantly a web show, but you're going to be headed to Velocity and you will have done these feature films. I would have never believed any of that story. So one of the things I'm thrilled about is that we've been able to do this as long as we have and still enjoy it. Yeah. And to see it resonate with the audience, knowing that people are in cars they love because of the show, that's exactly what we wanted.